Please be advised that everything in my video is purely for entertainment purposes. These are purely my thoughts and opinions and are subjective. I must advise you to please do your own research. All media users found on the public domain and are fair use and fair dealings. Hey you guys, I'm back again. I'm on a roll this week. It's amazing what a little bit of exercise can do for you really, isn't it? So we're officially in my favourite sort of temperature time of the year. I mean, I do love hot weather, but when I'm on holiday in the UK, like I said before in previous videos, it gets really muggy here. But this I like because I can get out all of my snuggly jumpers again. I do love a good fluffy jumper. So what's been going on with me? Well, aside from obviously speaking to you guys quite a lot, um, I'm having a standoff with my husband. It's a very serious subject. He promised me two weeks ago he was going to buy me some flowers. Now, now, normally I'm not the sort of person that expects my husband to buy me flowers um, and it's always a nice surprise when he does but I'm making a point this time because he said to me I'm gonna buy you some flowers tomorrow this was two weeks ago so I have left my last batch of sunflowers that he bought me sitting on the windowsill which are now grown mold up the stem so each night when he does the washing up I cook he washes up well you think that he would look at it and go oh yeah okay he's sweeping up the dead leaves and petals but I don't know does he know what I'm up to or does he just not think Secondly, my dog Lucia, naturally, as soon as we adopted her and I paid the adoption fee, she got sick straight to the vets, £160. Nothing major, she had a bit of a urinary tract infection, so she's on antibiotics. She's got a liquid once a day and she's got tablets which are the size of a moon that I have to somehow convince her to eat. Now, the other one's daft as a bat. It can have a bit of cheese on it, a bit of chicken on it, or even smell like a piece of food. This one eats out of the rubbish and she'll gobble it up. This one, she seems a little bit smarter. So um, I've tried breaking it up, putting it in the food. No, nope. manages to eat all of the food, Plah. spits it back out, spits it out on the floor. So I have to stop the other dog eating it. Or she just leaves it stuck to the bowl. And I mean, she's had meat, gravy and biscuits. She's licked all around it and just around the edges of the tablet where she's literally pressed up against it with her tongue gone, nope, don't want that. She's an absolute bugger. So then I've found myself trying to give my dog a tablet, right? And I hate doing this because it makes me feel a terrible human being. But I grab the tablet, I grab hold of her, I open her mouth and I just ram my finger down her throat. Now I'm quite a gag conscious person and I'm as I'm doing it and she's doing it. And I'm like, right, shove it down there. And she's, she's got a jaw up and you can see that she's going, I'm going to bring it up. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And you keep her snout shut. She wags her tail afterwards. So she knows that I'm not hurting her and I do give her a treat just for swallowing it but both of us you should see it it's not a great sight <laughs> why can't they just make all dog medicine in liquid form it would make life so much easier so i'm back for a very good reason she's back <laughs> We knew, I did say in the last video that I released that she was going to be appearing yesterday. Um, she's paid again to um, be on that Fortune's Most Powerful Women, as I disclosed. She was talking about being a courageous leader for some reason. Because she's not courageous, she's definitely not a leader, but she's certainly good at plagiarising. And telling some serious whoppers. It's not often that I can be left open-mouthed like with Megan by now because obviously we think that we've seen it all each week we think oh no she can't get any worse than what this is or she can't say anything worse and yet she does this was a real for me did she really just say that moment and she did Megan has compared us and social media users the same as drug addicts now one this is a plagiarized quote which has been said before but more importantly Netflix have only recently just ran a documentary called The Social Dilemma everything that Megan has said in this video was literally word for word what was covered in Social Dilemma so obviously she's got a lot of time in her hands so she's watching a lot of Netflix but you think that she would actually say I watched this Netflix documentary and it's very true blah 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 no no credit to anyone else so she's paid to speak in this instance but she's literally talking about what other people have said and passing it off almost as her own. As for her calling social media users addicts, um, I know that I take breaks from social media. I know that most of you guys have breaks from social media. Most of us can stop going on social media as of when we want, come off various platforms, you know, take a break. But we're not getting a break from Megan and ironically, she is on social media practically every day. She is using social media to get her voice heard and haven't we heard a lot of that voice since she's left the monarchy? Let's face it, we've seen more Zoom calls from Meghan in the last few months than we've probably seen Madonna's boobs fall out on stage. Unfortunately, you are going to have to listen to a little bit of a clip just because it's going to be in context with the rest of my video. So sorry in advance. You know, I have, for my own self-preservation, I have not been on social media for a very long time. I'd had a personal account years ago, which I closed down. And then we had one through the institution in our office that was in the UK. 
I don't know what's out there, and in many ways that's helpful for me. I, I have a lot of concerns for people that have become obsessed with it. You know, people who are addicted to drugs are called users and people who are on social media are called users. And there is something algorithmically that is in there that is creating this obsession. Two words for you, pathological liar. Now I'm afraid you are gonna get a double whammy here because I need to just quickly refresh your memories from the last podcast where Megan spoke. You know, I can speak personally to, I'm told that in 2019, I was the most trolled person in the entire world, male or female. It's almost unsurvivable. That's so big, you can't even think of what that feels mm. like. So if Megan was only told that she was the most trolled of 2019, she has absolutely no idea what's out there. Everything's just noise, compliments, insults, whatever. It all just goes down the same drain. She hasn't had a social media account for ages. She's got no idea what people are saying about her. Yet she went on to explain to those children on the Teenage Mental Health from World Mental Health Day that what she received in terms of trolling was almost unsurvivable. But you didn't know about it, or it didn't affect you, or you don't read it, or you don't have social media accounts. She's literally contradicting herself from one day to the next to extreme degrees. It was almost unsurvivable. What was Megan? I thought it was all noise. Secondly, Meghan Markle was one of the biggest social media addicts, as she now likes to call us, out there. She only quit the TIG because she was forced to, because she was so busy trying to trick the monarchy that she was going to be a worthwhile member of the royal family. Oh, of course I'll give up my TIG lifestyle blog and my Instagram. Of course, no, that's, I know that's truly what's expected of me to become a royal bride. But she was actually an addict herself with her attempt at a lifestyle blog called The Tig, where she pretty much promoted herself. I mean, let's be fair, the majority of pictures on The Tig were of Meghan talking about, well, Meghan. And when she first started dating Harry, she used this particular website to, um, you know, drop hints, really subtle hints that she and Harry were dating. You remember the matching wedding bracelets from Botswana, the hat, the comparison to the spooning bananas, but we've seen the reality of the spooning bananas these days, haven't we? And Sussex Royal, does she think that we're all stupid or forgetful? She went on to say in the Zoom chat that this was given to them by the institution. Wow, Harry's family or the royal family, the institution that you conned into giving you titles and did a runner with, the institution which is the only reason that you have the platform that you do now and the house. She just can't help herself but make swipes at the royal family and people are becoming very, very bored with it. She's so see-through. She's either referring to the fact that she's a victim or she's taken a swipe again at the monarchy. She has the cheek, however, to go on and say that Sussex Royal was not managed by either her or Harry. They had a whole team dedicated to it. Well, why was it a crock of self-promoting shite then? No one believes it. Everyone worked out quite quickly that Meghan was the one behind it for the simple fact that British people do not write like that. The sugary, sweet, sickly kind of messages and posts that she put up literally would be the mirror of the kind of drivel that she would post in the TIG. The way she spelt words was completely Americanized. And not just British people, I don't mean that to sound offensive to everyone else in the world, but anyone that's got a basic understanding of their own self-awareness. You know, a lot of the posts, when she tied that ribbon for that girl that had been raped and murdered in South Africa, it wasn't about the girl, it was about Meghan. On, I think it was last year's International Day of the Girl, Meghan posted her own speech that she did at the UN, and does everyone remember when she did the soapbox kind of commercial and she got it taken down? Your whole class wrote a joint letter, multiple complaints were made about that, and it was taken down but no 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 it was single-handedly Megan. Their entire Instagram account was full of quotes, real spiritual quotes talking about loving and showing kindness and respect to others while Harry and Meghan did absolutely the opposite. It was met by constant criticism as well so this is probably why Megan's going oh we had nothing to do with that. Yes you did. She started babbling going on about you know building brands and echo chambers seriously echo 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 but at this point, I kind of switched off. I already envisioned myself doing this video because I was just like, I just, I can't not. So two cups of coffee and here I am. 
Now, social media, whilst there is a negative element to social media, there is also a very, very positive side to social media, especially in the climate that which has been this year. It's enabled a lot of us that have been cut off, myself included, that haven't been able to see family and friends that have felt very lonely to make friendships and to talk to people and to have that kind of comfort. I'll be honest, guys, I'm not making this up. You know, I see you guys that I chat to on my YouTube and on Twitter as my friends. You know, I talk to so many of you and I know your names like you know my names. You know, we have a brief chat and stuff. And it has really, really kept me going through the really really dark times so for Megan to come out and state that everyone on social media is the you know comparing us to drug addicts when like I said she's clearly got a problem and needs rehab herself and what I find it most offensive is she's kind of belittling the real kind of emotional trauma and stress that people that do have drug addictions go through she's comparing it to people that use social media drug addiction is a very 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 serious thing it's a very very hard thing to come out of I have experience of this from watching a friend go through it. I had an ex-partner that went through it. You know, it is a very, very hard thing to break and it takes a lot of emotional support and the person has to be really ready themselves to kind of see that they have a problem. And as I said, for Megan to just be so blasé, oh yeah, people that use social media is just the same as drug addicts. She should not be talking about this. I was speaking to one of my new friends yesterday. She's actually a qualified counsellor and she's a life coach. And we were discussing it saying it's amazing that Megan is not being called out out by people that are very very high up in the psychiatric field saying that you know if she's going to talk about people's mental health and Harry that they should actually have a trained professional on these videos and these podcasts with them because I think they're setting an unhealthy kind of balance they say things and they've got such a fan club I'm still seething about Harry saying you don't need to go to the doctors like going to the doctors is something to be ashamed about these two are not medical professionals they are not trained and I will say again if you feel that you need help please reach out please speak to people please speak to doctors please use some of the helplines and the websites that are available but this is the sort of thing that I'm shocked that Harry and Meghan still think that they're okay or people give them a platform to talk about mental health these two should not be talking about mental health when they both clearly still have issues themselves and even just hearing Meghan talking about the subject of courageous leadership are you kidding? Trevor, the first her, her, her previous husband, shall we say, found out that he was getting divorced from Meghan was he opened up a FedEx parcel, or whoever the courier was, and found the wedding rings in there. She didn't even have the decency or the balls to turn around and say, I want a divorce. She just sent her rings back in the post. Look at Megxit. She got the Megxit announcement to come out and she literally ran away. She jumped on a plane. She was not, she didn't stay behind. She took the kid and she bolted. She left Harry to deal with the negotiations and the fallout that was Megxit while she went and lived it up in a mansion in Canada. This is not someone that is courageous. This is not someone that is a feminist and she certainly shows no leadership skills whatsoever. She's cried victim as soon as she started receiving any sort of warranted criticism, even when it was stuff to do with them catching private jets. Oh, people are racially attacking me. No, they're not. They're calling you out on your behaviour. You know, the amount of money that she spent on clothes. Oh, no, they're racially attacking me. It's only because I'm biracial. No, it's not. It's because you're coming across like a gold digger. You're going back on everything that you declared you were going to do in that engagement interview. You've lied to everyone. Of course you're going to get called out. With every appearance that Megan does, she makes herself look more and more thirsty. She's been so hypocritical and contradicting herself pretty much every single video now. I really think that she needs to take a break. Well, the rest of us need a break. I feel like she's forcing like a daytime TV show on all of us. You know, now that daytime slots have gone down, we know with Ellen, that she's kind of doing all these different subjects and talking on the couch because she's hoping someone is going to maybe pick her up as a talk show host. The biggest problem is though with that is she only wants to talk about herself. So I I don't think that that's actually really going to take off. We get it. She wants to be the most famous person in the world. She's achieved that status. You just need to put a big I and a big N in front of it. She is absolutely the most infamous person in the entire world. So fear not, the rant is over and I've got a nice little palette cleanser for you. It is so wonderful to be back at the reopened Natural History Museum where we can all enjoy its treasures once again. I'm here because tomorrow night, I'm announcing the 56th Wildlife Photographer of the Year. I've been lucky enough to have a quick preview and I can say it's truly spectacular. I can't wait for you all to see it. Told you, I bet you all feel lovely and refreshed.
So the actual winning photograph was done by Sergi Gorshkov and it was titled The Embrace. I love tigers and this picture is absolutely stunning. What a beautiful picture and what a beautiful duchess. What a way to end the video. See you later. Bye. If you like my video, please remember to like and subscribe. Please, angry typists, you will be blocked, so save your fingers to time. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love, Taz.